Okay, so let's start our discussion. In the previous class, we were discussing investment appraisal area and we did first topic that was NPV. Uh, yep. We did topic of net present value and uh, we completed three questions on that. Um, then we started adjusted present value. It was a bit advanced topic, um, but a very good investment appraisal technique. Um, adjusted present value technique says that uh, while you are doing investment appraisal, what you should do is that you should calculate the net present value of the project based on the project specific risk and the project specific rate of return. You should not use the weighted average cost of capital of the whole company. Rather, you should use the rate of return, which is as per the risk of that project. Okay. And through that, we calculate the base case NPV. Once we have calculated the base case NPV, then we do certain financing adjustments. Once we have calculated the base case NPV, the next step will be that we will do certain financing adjustments. Now, what are the financing adjustments? The first financing adjustment is of the issue cost. That the company says that if the project would have raised the funds from the market, they would have incurred issue cost. So we also need the issue cost, which we are incurring. Okay. Number two was the tax benefit on that issue cost. Okay. Yeah. Number third was the tax benefit on the interest expense. Tax benefit on the interest expense on loan capacity due to the project. Okay. And the last was the benefit of the subsidized loan. Yep. Okay. And we did one question that was Fubiki company, a very good and a detailed question. We calculated base case NPV and we considered the financing adjustments also. I hope that you remember. Okay. Yep. Today we are moving towards another question that is Burum company. Okay. Um, this is uh, similar to, oh, sorry. this is similar to uh, Fubiki company question. Um, so this is another APV question. Yeah, this is another APV question. We will do two more questions of APV. One is Burung Company and the other one is Embrely Company. Let's start. Just a second. Oof. Let's start it. Burung Company. Okay. Yeah. So you have recently, you have recently commenced working for Burun company and are reviewing a four year project, which the company is considering for investment. Okay. Now the project is in business activity, which is very different from Burun company's current line of business. Okay. Now. The following net present value estimate has been made for the project. Okay. So there is a net present value estimate, which is already made sales revenue, direct project cost, interest. Now, uh, we never include interest payments in net present value estimate. Why? Yeah. Because the discount factor, which we use already includes the impact of the cost of capital. So there is no point of including the interest expense separately. So we don't include that in the relevant cash flows because the impact of the interest is already covered in the cost of capital. When we are uh, discounting through cost of capital, then there is no uh, sense of including the interest expense separately. So what, what can I make a note of? Should I just say that don't include interest in don't include interest and dividend payments because they are already, their impact is already included through cost of capital. Okay, then there is profit, tax, investment, and sale. Cash flows, he has used discount factor of 7%, and then there is a present value. Net present value is negative 1.6 mil, 5 million, and therefore the recommendation is that the project should not be accepted. Notes to the net present value appraisal. Now, there are some errors which he has explained in the notes. Let's look at them. In calculating the net present value of the project, the following notes were made. Since the real cost of capital is used to discount cash flows, neither the sale revenue nor the direct project cost has been inflated. It is anticipated that inflation rate applicable to sales revenue is 8% and direct project cost is 4%. Okay, so we will include the impact of the inflation. 
okay he has not considered the impact of inflation mm -hmm. because he has used the real cash flows the project will require initial investment of 38 million of this 16 million relates to plant and machinery which is expected to be sold for 4 million dollars when the project ceases after taking any taxation and inflation impact into account okay yep. tax allowable depreciation is available on plant and machinery at 50 percent in the first year followed by 25 percent per year thereafter on reducing balance basis a balancing adjustment is available in the year plant and machinery is sold burung company pays tax at 20 percent on its annual, uh, uh, annual taxable profits. No tax allowable depreciation is available on remaining investment assets and they will have nil value at the end of the project. Okay, now if you look at it here, the uh, he has included sales, he has included direct project cost, he has included interest, profit, and then he simply charged the tax. He failed to consider the impact of capital allowances. Okay. Yes. Then Burung company uses either a nominal cost of capital of 11% or real cost of capital of 7% to discount all projects. Given that the rate of inflation has been stable at 4% for number of years. They, they've done, they've taken 7% as the discount yeah. factor. Because they said that we haven't considered the impact of inflation. So that's wrong, obviously. We have to do it for 11%. For APV, we will consider the inflated cash flows. Okay, and then we will use uh, the project specific cost of capital, which is based on the beta asset of the project. Yeah. Okay. Interest is based on Burung Company's normal borrowing rate of 150 basis point over the 10 year government yield rate. At the beginning of each year, Burung company will need to provide working capital of 20% of the anticipated sales revenue for the year. Any remaining working capital will be released at the end of the project. Working capital and depreciation have not been taken into account in the net present value calculation above. Since depreciation is not a cash flow, and all working capital is returned at the end of the project, he has not included the impact of tax allowable depreciation and working capital in his NPV calculation. Okay. Further financial information. It is anticipated that the project will finance entirely by debt, 60% of which will be obtained from a subsidized loan scheme run by the government, which lends money at rate of 100 basis point below the 10 year government debt yield of 2.5%. Our normal borrowing rate is three, 150 basis point above the government yield. Yeah. And the subsidized loan is 100 basis point below the 10 year government yield. Yeah. And government rate is 2.5%. So this means that the subsidized loan rate is 2.5 minus 1, 1.5. Yeah. Whereas normal rate is 2.5 plus 1.5, which is 4. Okay. How do you know the normal rate is? 10 year government debt yield rate is 2.5%. Where does it say that? Please look at the screen. Okay, okay, sorry. Yeah. Okay. So uh, the subsidized loan is 100 basis point below 2.5%. So that will be 1.5%. Whereas our normal borrowing rate is 150 basis point over the 10 year government. So that will be 2.5 plus 1.5, which will be 4. Okay. okay. The normal rate is 4%. And subsidized rate is 1.5%. The government will lend us at 1.5%. Issue cost related to raising the finance are 2% of the gross finance. The remaining 40% fund will be funded from Burum Company normal borrowing sources. It can be assumed that the debt capacity available to Burung company is equal to actual amount of debt finance raised for the project. Okay. Yep. Burung company has identified a company, Lintu company, which operates in the same line of business as that of the project. 
it is considering. Lintu companies financed by 40 million shares trading at $3.2 each and $34 million debt trading at $94 per $100. Lintu company equity beta is 1.5. The current yield on government treasury bills is 2%. And it is estimated that the market risk premium is 8%. Lintu company pays tax at 20%. Both Broom and Lintu company pay tax in the same year when the profits are earned. Calculate adjusted present value. Okay. Again, I would say the question is not difficult if you remember the steps and you follow the flow of the question. Yeah. Okay, so let's look at it. This question will reinforce your concepts which you have learned in a few key company. Mm. Now, let's start this question. Um, Burum company. The project life is of how many years? Four years. Yeah. Adjusted present value. You're not tired, so it's late for you, isn't it? Yeah, but uh, because we are taking classes from the home, so uh, too much energy is not wasted. Because when I go and teach it uh, physically, that is very big problem because I, in morning I teach in A-level colleges and they are in different parts of the city. So I travel a lot. So due to that traveling, usually uh, I got tired when I go teach physically. But in this home-based teaching, this online teaching is very much comfortable for me. That we have to sit in one place and I don't have to travel. So for me, Corona is very good. <laughs> <laughs> me as well, everyone. I like it as well. Yeah, for officer, those who are working from home, the corona is very good. That you are relaxed, you have to work from home. Yeah. yeah. No, but uh, in Pakistan, there is announcement that schools will and uh, all the educational institutions will get open from 15th of September. Ah. So, well, let's see. Now. Um, the project is of four years. Uh, yes, uh, he has made us the entire schedule zero, one, two, three, and four. So uh, let's start now. First of all, again, we will look at the operational cash flows. So zero, sales. one, two, three, and four. First of all, we will pick sales revenue. Yep. He has provided us some detail of the sales, but the problem is that he haven't considered the impact of inflation in sales. Yeah. So that we have to do it ourselves. Workings. So it's um eight percent increased in sales. Workings and sales. Okay, so let's look at it. See at sales. Uh, twenty-three point zero three. We have to do the. Do we have to do the? Do we have to do the the power? Yes, yes, yes. We have to use the concept of the power because the sales number is already increasing, maybe due to increase of num due to number of increase of units. So now when we have to put the impact of the sales, so we have to use the concept of power because in year two, we have to inflate it twice. Hmm. Well, the what first I'm one is, is I'm just taking okay. the picture of this because otherwise I have to change the screen too much. Now, so let's look at it. Year one, year two, year three, and year four, 23.03 .03 million. Times 1.08 to the power one. 1.08 power one. Is 24.87. 24.87. Yep, if you do the next one, that is. Okay, so 23.03 .03 million into 1.08, it is 24.87. Then next one is 36.6 .6 times 1.08 to the power two. 
36.6 million into 1.08 power 2, yes. That is 42.69. 42.69. Okay, then 49.07 million. Yep. Uh, 1.08 to power 3 is 61.81. And the fourth year sales is 27.14 to the power 1.08 power 4. Yes, what will be the number? Thirty-six point nine two. Thirty-six point nine two million. Yep. Okay, so these are the sales numbers: twenty-four point eight seven, then forty-two point six nine, sixty-one point eight one. 36.92. Okay. So yes. these are our sales amounts. Now direct project cost. Then let's move to working two. That is for direct project cost. Because Increase included in the schedule. Increases by 4%. Direct project cost. Okay. Um, direct project cost is 13.8, 21.96, 29.44, and 16.88. Mm. Okay. And the growth rate in direct project cost is 4% per year. Okay. So. Yes. First one is 14, 14 37. Year one, year two, year three, year four, 13.82 million. Number two is 21.96 million before inflation. I'm writing, and uh, third one is 29.44 million and 16.28. 16.28 million. What was the inflation rate? Uh, four percent, 1.04 power one, 1.04 power two, 1.04 power three. And 1.04 power 4. Okay. First one, 14.37. 14.37 million. Next one is 23.75. 23, uh, sorry, 23.75. Then? 33.12. 33.12 and 16.28 into 1.04 power 4, 19.04, 14.37. So we are putting up direct project cost. Okay, 14.37, 23.75. Thirty-three point one two and nineteen point zero four. Okay, so I think that it is not a trouble till now. Sales and the direct project cost. Okay, so let's move forward. What he's saying. Um, then he has included interest. So uh, interest is not included in uh, adjusted present value calculation because the impact of interest will already be covered through the cost of capital used for discounting. Okay, so I'll just write a brief note for you so that you will remember it. Impact of interest expense, impact of interest expense, is not included is not included in npv 
and APV calculation. In NPV and APV calculation, as it is already covered, as it is already covered through cost of capital calculation, through cost of capital used in discounting, used in discounting. Okay. Yeah. Done. Yeah. Let's move forward. Okay. So then he arrived at the profit and then he included the tax. So what we will do is we will first include the capital amounts. Now, the tax allowable depreciation is available on plant and machinery, which is of $16 million. Okay. 50% in first year, followed by 25% per year, thereafter on reducing balance. A balancing adjustment is available. Okay. Now, the scrap value of the plant and machinery is $4 million. Yeah. Okay. So, let's look at capital allowances. So, we do, uh, this is reducing balance, yeah? Yes, but the first year, he said... 15%, 50%. 50%. Capital allowances, year one, year two, year three, and year four. Net book value, $16 million, 50%. What will be the capital allowance? $8 million. And we have $8 million remaining. 8 million is remaining. We will take 25%. Two. Two million dollars. Yeah, so we have six remaining. 25%. 1.5 million dollars. 4.5 million dollars. Now, in the last year, we have to take the balancing adjustment. 4.5 is the uh, net book value. And I think scrap value was four million. Yeah. So 0.5 million dollars will be the balancing allowance. Okay. Yep. So if you look at it here, I um, 16 million dollar was the value of the plant and machinery. Yes, $16 million was the value of the plant and machinery, which is expected to be sold for $4 million when the project ceases. Okay. So uh, these are the capital allowances, A to 1.5 and 0.5. Yeah. 8 to 1.5 and 0.5. Yeah. So these are the capital allowances working for taxable profits. So should I do that for you once I'll start from year one? 87. 26.9. Sorry? First one, 2.5. Year one is? 2.5. 2.5. Year 2 is 16.94. 16.94 and 27.19. Okay. So, uh, sorry. Together we can do this quite quick. Oh. So we can give paper together also. <laughs> uh, I wish, I wish. The amount of tax uh, was, the rate of tax was, um, yes, Borum company pays tax at 20%. Yeah. So let's include the impact of the tax. 20. It doesn't say whether it's, this is year after. This should be year after, wouldn't it? It is written that it is, it will be paid oh, in same, same year. year same in year, the same last year. line of the question before requirement, it was written. Okay. 2.2. 
into 0.2 is 3.4. Okay. Then we will reverse the capital allowances. A reversal of capital allowance. Eight. Eight to 1.5 and 0.5. Okay. Yes. Then what we will do is now we will put up the investments because now we are free because the tax is calculated and now we can include all types of cash flows. So when we talk about investment, uh, it was given the project will require initial investment of $38 million. Which, yeah. The project will require initial investment. Note number two, the initial investment is 38 and he has also included in his working. The initial investment is 38 and it is expected to be sold for $4 million. So scrap value is 4 million. Okay. So investment is 38 and scrap is four. Scrap we add, don't we? Yes, obviously. So scrap value is four million. Mm. Okay, now we have to deal with working capital. Because for working capital, there was some percentage of sales which we have to use. Um, working capital, yes. At the beginning of each year, Burum company will need to provide working capital at 20% of anticipated sales. Okay. okay. Yep. So, and uh, let's look at it. Working capital, working number five. We do it for working capital for the year before, right? Yes, because it is always required before the year, at the start of the year. Year zero, one, two, three, and four. So these are our sales, total working capital, and incremental working capital. Okay. What does it say about working capital? Sorry? What does it say about working capital? We just read it in the question, note number six. At the beginning of each year, Burum company need to provide working capital of 20% of the anticipated sales yeah, revenue yeah, yeah. for the year. Any remaining working capital will be released at the end of the project. Got it, got it, got okay. it. So, what we will do is that we will simply pick up the sales revenue, copy, and the sales is pasted here. Okay, what the working capital, we need 20%, 24.87 into 0.2. So 4.974 in year zero. Okay. Then 42.69 into 0 0.2, 8.538, 61.81 into 0 0.2, 12.362. Now, this is the total amount we need 36.92 into 0 0.2, 7.384. Yeah. Okay, so what will be the incremental amount? Eight point. Here we need entire 4.974. Yeah, and then we do 4.974. We have 3.564. 3.564. Then 8.538. 3.824. 3.824. And then, then we have. Uh, negative, we have 7.384 is negative 4.978. 4.978, and the net amount is 7.384. Okay, 
So 4.9 yes. is the initial working capital investment. Then we need 3.5. Then we need 3.8. Yep. Then we will take out 4.9. And yep. then we will take out 7.3. Okay? Yep. I hope that you are understanding it. Of course, of course. So we are done with sales. We are done with direct project cost, capital allowance, taxable, reversal of allowance. What, what, one second. So you flip the, so the negative, 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 negative. If In the initial negative. two years, we required the investment and then we yeah. took out the amount from the working capital. Oh, okay, okay. Now these 4.974 was invested initially. Mm. Then the difference was invested. The difference was invested. Then the difference was negative amount. So we took out the amount. And then okay, the net amount was all, also taken out. So the investment amounts are shown negative. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The got withdrawals it. are shown positive. Got it. Okay. So uh, let's look at it. If anything is left, I don't think. Uh, Okay, so um, I think we are done with all of the adjustments, sales, direct project cost, interest. We have uh, discussed that we don't consider it. Tax is done, investment and yep. sale is done. We, now we what we have to do is the most important thing, which is discount factor. Because in APV calculation, we have to calculate the discount factor, which is related to the risk of the project. Hmm. Okay, yep, and yep, for yep. that, I think we need to read something from here. Burung Company has identified a company, Link to Company, which operates in the same line of business as that of project it is okay. considering. Link to Company is financed by 40 million shares trading at $3.2 each and 34 million debt trading at $94 per $100. Hmm. Link to companies, equity beta is estimated at 1.5. I don't need his equity beta. What I need is the beta asset because the beta asset of link to company will be the beta asset of my project. Mm. Okay, so let's start calculating it. We can easily calculate the beta asset if we have the beta equity number and the value of equity in that. So, oh, uh, so sometimes, sometimes they give us beta equity. Sometimes we have to calculate. In the last question, we have to calculate. In the last beta question, equity. he gave us cost of equity, and from cost of equity, we calculated the beta equity through CAPM formula. So what is okay? So then let me make a note. What is that? Ke equals RF plus RM. This, this is the formula plus. of the CAPM. CAPM model, capital asset pricing model, which you study in VAC. Capital asset pricing model risk free rate plus RM minus RF into beta equity. In order to calculate cost of equity, you study two models, the dividend valuation model and the CAPM model. So what is RF, RM? RM is the risk, RF is the risk free rate. Yeah. RF is the risk free rate plus RM, market rate minus risk free rate. So you okay. will get the risk premium which the market is charging. And then you multiply it with the beta factor, which is risk responsiveness. Yeah, correct. We will study it in detail when we'll discuss VAC. Okay, now, working six. Discount factor, discount factor in base case NPV calculation of APV, in base case calculation of APV will be will be discount factor will be discount factor based on project specific risk based on project specific risk yeah yeah okay discount factor in base case npv calculation of APV will be discount factor based on project specific risk. Yeah. Okay, now, project specific risk, 
project specific risk will be similar to that of lin2 company yeah will be similar to that of lin2 company as it operates in industry as it operates in same industry in industry it to which in industry to which project relates mm. okay yeah to which project relates beta asset of lin2 company hmm. beta asset of lin2 company will be same as will be same as beta asset of project yeah, so we've got to use the formula beta asset equals beta equity, all that big old formula. Yeah? Yes, will be same as beta asset of project as they both are in oh. same industry and carry similar business risk as they both are in are in similar industry oh. and carry similar business risk yeah okay yeah are you getting it yes of course yeah. no. so beta asset is equal to beta asset is equal to beta equity into equity um, divided by equity plus debt into one minus t plus beta debt into um, debt d one into one minus t, t divided by e plus e plus d Hmm. One minus t, okay. Hmm. Yeah. So uh, we are provided with beta equity. Yeah, beta equity is one point five. Lin two company beta equity is one point five. Uh, the value of equity is forty million shares trading at three point two. Okay. So you're going to do it in 40,000 or you're going to do 40 million? Yeah? 40 million into 3.2 will be the value of equity. 40 times 3.2 is 128 million. Beta equity was 1.5. 1. 1.5. Value of equity is 40 million shares multiplied by 3.2. 3.2. So it is. So that's the equity, yeah? So that is 128 million. 128 million and what about the value of debt 34 million debt trading at 94 dollars per hundred dollars so 34 million divided by 100 into 94 34 34 million, 34 million is the value of, is the part based on par value yeah divided by 100 into 94 94 okay yeah yes and the tax rate is 20 percent what is the value of debt 34 divided by 100 31.96 okay so yep. uh, beta asset is equal to Beta asset is equal to beta equity 1.5 into equity 128 divided by 128 million plus 31.96 31.96 into 1 minus 1 20%. Minus 20 percent, yeah. 20 percent. So it will get after tax. And the beta debt value is assumed as zero. Well, why and is the, it assumed at zero again? Yeah, 
because debt is normally assumed as risk free. So in case of debt, we assume that there will be no additional risk responsiveness. So I'm okay. going to say debt, debt assumed risk free. Unless the examiner states otherwise. Okay. Yeah. Beta debt is equal to zero as examiner is silent. One minus, okay, so 0 0.8 times 31.96 plus 128. Normal assumption is that debt is risk free. Therefore, perfect, perfect. Beta debt is zero. Okay. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so zero multiplied by any number will be zero. So the beta asset will be 1.25. 1.25. Okay. Now, beta, this beta asset of link to company will be considered will be used as beta asset for project okay this beta so this beta asset of lintu will be used as beta asset, asset for, for project. project yeah why because they both have same risk because they operate in same industry yeah as yeah. beta asset for project because <laughs> lintu company and project are in same industry, oh. are of same industry, therefore share business risk. Yeah. Share business risk. Okay? Yeah. Now, now as the project will be 100% equity financed by the uh, Burung company, Therefore, the beta asset will be equal to beta equity. How do you know the project is financed completely by Burung? Because it is the basic assumption of the APB that the company will finance the project. When we calculate the APB, we, I taught you uh, in the previous class also, yeah, you, that the company said, yeah. will invest in the project and then the company will raise the funds from the market. So okay. you said obviously, okay, so obviously as project will be 100% equity finance, yes. so this will be considered as the beta asset is equal to the beta equity. As Burung Company will finance this project, mm. will finance this project mm. through 100% equity, mm. therefore beta asset will be equal to beta equity. Okay. So what, you know, what is the formula KE? That is the cap M one, but what is KE? Cost of equity. Oh, cost of equity, okay. KE is equal to RF no. plus RM minus RF into so cost beta of equity, equity. Cost of equity is basically discount factor. Yeah, uh, the, no, the cost of equity is the discount factor in this case because we are assuming 100% equity finance. Otherwise, the discount factor is the weighted average cost of capital, which also includes the impact of KD, cost of debt, and it will also include impact of KP, cost of reference shares, mm. that you will all discuss when you will be studying the chapter of VAC. Okay? Yeah, yeah. So, Cost of equity here will be RF is the risk free rate is the risk free rate is 2%. The current yield on government treasury bills is 2%, and so the market that, risk so, so, premium is 8%. So, so that 2% is RF, yeah? RF, and he has directly provided as the premium. Premium means RM minus RF. Uh, market risk premium okay and that is, that, is oh, that, that is basically r rm and minus rf so that's the premium that's two so the rate is 12 percent ah, okay right okay 
So now this is our discount factor for base case and PV. Hmm. Okay. Lovely. If you want, I can write one statement more here. As in base case NPV, project is, as in base case NPV, project is assumed as, oh. is assumed as 100% equity financed by company, oh. equity financed by company, therefore, KE will be considered as VAC of project. Okay? Yeah, 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 got it. That's good. Will be considered as VAC of project. Mm. Now, basically, the model is that Burung Company will be 100% equity owner will be 100% equity holder of project hmm. whereas Burung company oh they'll have 60% 60% from 60% loan from government subsidized loan and 40% from market 40% normal loan. Okay. Oh, but okay. the base case NPV hmm. the base case NPV is this. This is the base case NPV. Okay. The, uh, this part is base case NPV. In base case NPV, we consider this part, okay? Huh. And this above part, huh. this above part is the financing by adjustment. Oh. These are the financing adjustments, which we do after the base case NPV. Okay? Yeah. Are you getting it? Yes, completely, sir. So, now the discount factor is 12%. Yep, so you can use the table. Okay, first of all, we had to calculate the net cash flows. Uh. What's the next question like? Is the next question different? One, one adjustment will be different in the end that you need to study. And, and, and so once that we do that question, we've covered APV. We, we have covered all the adjustments of APV. Lovely, lovely, sir. And then we'll move towards nice. that. Then the remaining appraisal techniques are very easy. easy. IRR lovely, 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 sir. Lovely. That's what I want to hear. I'll, I'll start from end, yeah? Yeah, 6.5, 16.94 minus 3.3 plus 2 minus 3.8. It's 11.84. Last one, 25.78. 25.78, 27.19 minus 5.4 plus 4.5 plus 4.9. It's 28.19. Okay. Yep. So now let's put up the discount factors. So we have to do 12% is, is this the normal present value table? 0 0.893? Discount factor 12%, yes. 0 0.893. I'll, I'll tell you, sir. Don't yeah. worry. 0 0.893. 0 0.796. 0 0.797. 0.712. Yes. And 0.636. So these are the present values. Forty two point nine. And this will be our base case 
NPV. So, 6.5 into 0.893, yes. Last is? Last is 16.39. 16.39, And 20.07. Twenty-eight point zero seven. Sorry. Why? Why did you put the last twenty point zero seven? Yes. Why have you put negative? Oh, was that special? Because these are the investment amounts. Now here is zero. Yeah. These okay. are the okay. negative okay. amounts. Forty-two point nine minus five point eight minus nine point four three minus twenty minus sixteen point three nine. So the base case NPV is eight point seven two. Negative. Just a minute, I think I have done something wrong. 42.9. Positive, positive, feet. positive. Yeah, yeah, it's 9.43. 8.79. Yeah. So, let's do the financing adjustments. So, the first financing adjustment will be of issue cost. Mm. Now, if you look at the issue cost, he says that, um, um, yes, here it is. Issue cost related to raising the finance are 2% of the gross finance required. Mm. The remaining 40% will be funded from Burung Company, normal bond. So it is 2% of the gross finance. Very simple. We require 42.9. 42.9 million divided by 98% into 2%. Oh. So this will be. 42.9 divided by 98 uh, into 2. 0 0.87. 0 0.87. Okay. Tax benefit is... Tax, tax benefit is 0.87 times 20%. On issue cost. 0.87 million dollars oh. into 20 percent how much 0.174 sorry 0.174 174 million okay then uh, we have to take impact of tax saving on interest cost oh. Oh, this was a bit tricky wasn't it Okay, let's look so at look. it, tax saving on interest cost. Now, when we talk about it, how much mm -hmm. is the borrowing ratios if we look at it? For, for, uh, uh, borrowing was 80% and 20%. 60-40, uh, 60-40. Yes. 60% uh, of which will be obtained from subsidized loan scheme run by the government which lends 100 basis point below the 10-year government debt yield of 2.5%. 100 basis point below. Okay, so, so uh, the amount we require is 42.9 million times 60%. 42.9 million into 60% into 2.5% minus 1%, 1 multiplied by tax rate, which is 20%. Yeah. multiplied by 42.9 is the amount required 60% is the subsidized loan 2.5 minus 1 is the subsidized rate and 20% is the tax rate and then now, now we the, have to do the annuity factor of yes. four years annuity factor of four of, years at debt market at interest market rate, interest rate. yes which is 2.5% so I will write a brief comment here on it is it 2.5% yeah yeah. No, no, no. 2.5% is the de debt yield rate. The market rate was, I think, 1 1.5 base, 150 basis point above. Uh, yeah, sorry, sorry. 
which lends money at a rate of 100. Oh, no. Uh, oh, 150 As above, 150 above. As tax saving will be for four years. So it's 4%. Will be four years. Therefore, in order to calculate, therefore, in order to calculate present value of tax savings, annuity factor of four years will be used. Yeah. Of four years. Uh, will be used okay as yep, transaction so is debt related four percent yes as transaction is debt related therefore market interest rate will be used for discounting okay so it's four percent will be used for discounting. Okay. Market interest rate is 2.5% is the risk-free rate. And we borrow 150 basis point above that. So 4%. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now check the annuity factor of 4%. 4 on uh, four, four years. Four years is four percent of four years is three point six three zero. Of four years is three point six three zero. Six three zero. Okay. Uh, you check from the table. Three point uh, six three zero. Forty two. So must have landed. You land tonight one fifteen. Uh, I messaged him yesterday saying have a safe flight. He got very happy that I messaged. <laughs> he got he, he got happy that I remembered. I said to him that you told me. Forty-two point nine, sixty percent, two point five minus one, one point five percent into point two into three point six three zero. So it is 0.280. Point two eight zero. Okay. Mm. Then again, forty two point nine million. Forty percent of the loan will be normal loan. Mm. Two point five percent plus one point five percent. This is normal percent. market interest, isn't it? Yes. Yes. Into three point six three zero again. So forty two point nine into point four into 0 0.04 into 0 0.2 into 3.630 so it's 0 0.498 okay yeah the last adjustment tax benefit on subsidized loan okay yeah. Now, uh, the subsidized loan is forty-two point nine million into sixty percent multiplied by normal interest rate is four percent. Yeah. And subsidized rate is one point five percent. Wait, 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 wait. What are you doing here? Oh, you're doing 1.5 below. Okay. okay. Why can I do working it? I can do working it here. One second, one second. What have you done there, sir? Go back. Just a minute. Normal loan rate is... Normal loan rate is 2.5 plus 1.5. Yeah. This is your normal loan rate. Hmm. What is your subsidized rate? Uh, one basis point below, so they do below. Uh, three. Two point five minus one. It's one basis point below the debt yield government rate, not below our rate. If you look at it here, the subsidized loan is sixty percent, oh, okay, okay, okay. 
100 point below the 10 year government rate what did you do above then you did before you do just four 1.5 4 minus 1.5 so what is the subsidy benefit what is the subsidy benefit 2.5 2.5% is the subsidy benefit so i have written 4 minus 1.5 the subsidy benefit. What will be my subsidy benefit? Every year I will get benefit of 2.5%. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Now what you can do is you can simply write 2.5%. Working gate. <laughs> Oh, you, you, okay, yeah, you've done the work. Because, before, because yeah. I have, I've written the complete here. Yeah, yeah. yeah okay. okay. So now this is my subsidy benefit. Then multiplied by 1 minus 20%. Huh. So that this subsidy benefit gets after tax. Huh. And then multiplied by the NUT factor because it will be every year saving. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 42.9 into 0.6 into 0 0.025 into 0.8 into 3.630. So it will be 1.86 million dollars. Okay, do you want me to repeat? No, I've got it, I've got it, it's fine. Okay, so my adjusted present value will be 8.79 minus 0 0.87 plus 0 0.174 plus 0 0.280 plus 0.498 plus 1.868. So it's 10.74 million. Lovely, got it. Seven four million adjusted present value. Okay, so if you look at this question, it was it had no new adjustment. It was almost, I would say, same as a Fubiki company question. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Now the next question, which is of APV, that is Embrely Company. Huh. That is all, almost same, but only one new adjustment in Embrely Company. Huh. Um, now that new adjustment is, if you read it here, huh. Embrely Company's chairman had noted that all of the company's debt, including the new debt, will be repayable within three within three to five no 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 yes here here it is bank loan repayable in equal annual installment over the project's life okay. now the problem in this question is that in this question the loan will be repaid in annual installments which means that at the end of every year the loan balance will get changed okay and due to that the amount of interest will get changed but now, if you look at the normal questions, what we do is we simply take the loan amount yeah. and we multiply it with one interest rate. In these questions, we assume that the loan will directly be paid at the end of the project, hmm. which means that the loan balance will remain same throughout the project life. But hmm. in Embrely company, what will happen is that the loan balance will decline every year because you will make annual installments. Got it. Okay. Now, when the loan balance will change every year, you have to calculate a different interest amount of every year. So you have to make a loan amortization schedule in this question. Okay. Okay. And that will be the only new thing. But the, the impact of that will only come in this adjustment. The whole question can be done. Only this part will create problem. Got it. Okay. Got it. But I'll do it in the next class, not today, because it's getting <laughs> late. Tomorrow we'll do a longer class, uh, because I think you said tomorrow, that tomorrow. tomorrow I'm, I'm, I'm leaving tomorrow afternoon. At so what time? I'm leaving at 3, three o'clock. 3 o'clock, so 3, three o'clock means, means 11.30 at my side. 
No, no, no. My three, my three p.m. will be your so my seven side. Okay, p.m. Okay, okay, okay. We can take it. We can take it four p.m. My side. Okay, my side. So, so it will be twelve. Twelve your side. Yeah, that's good. That's good. So we can complete the Emreli company question also, and then we'll complete the small techniques IRR, rows, payback period also. If, so you, then, if you if 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 you can do earlier, can you can you do earlier at all? Um, 12 is okay. 12 is okay. 12 is okay. Actually, it's fine. 12 years, yeah. 12 is my five. good. Okay. Yeah. So, and uh, on Saturday, Sunday, you are not available. Saturday, Sunday, we'll have break because I'm not here, and then we'll start again Monday. Right. So, then yeah. we'll go for the past paper session because our investment appraisal area will be done. So, we'll yeah. do two, three questions and then we'll move towards VAC. Thank, Thank you, you, sir. Thank you. Bye bye.